In this module, we are going to be looking at some of the characteristics of the ocean. So to start with, when we are at the shoreline and work our way out, it's going to get gradually deeper. This area is called the continental margin, and it's where the continent extends out under the ocean. So the continental shelf is that underwater extension. Uh, we mine for mineral deposits, there are reservoirs of oil and natural gas, and also sand and gravel deposits that we can harvest from this area. Once you get past the continental shelf, you'll see that the depth starts um, to increase. This area where we see that is called the continental slope, and it's just the area that connects the continental shelf and then the deeper ocean floor. At the base of the continental slope, we have the continental rise. It's that gently sloping hill of where the sediments that have washed down the continental slope accumulate. Um, and then once you get past the continental rise, you're in the open ocean. Looking at this map, you can see the continental shelf in light blue. Um, where it extends out from the continents. This is the area that's exposed during an ice age when the seawater retreats. And then as sea levels rise during global warming, the continental shelf extends further out. Uh, we know that the ocean water is made of water and salt, uh, but salts are not just sodium chloride, which is table salt, but made up of other minerals as well. And you can see in this diagram that water makes up 96.5% of the ocean water, whereas the other 3.5% is dissolved salts, and then we can further break that down into different elements. Um, so the term we use for the amount of dissolved solids is salinity which is 3.5% or 35 parts per thousand. That means for every 35 parts of, or every 100 parts of ocean water, every, sorry, every thousand parts of ocean water, there's 35 parts of salt. The two main dissolved solids are chlorine and sodium, which combined make sodium chloride. 55% um, of the elements found are chlorine. Um, and that comes from Earth's interior, so volcanoes erupt um, on the ocean floor or on land, and it runs off into the water. Sodium is the second most abundant of the dissolved solids, and it comes from the chemical weathering of rocks on land and then is carried by rivers into the ocean. So that's where the salt comes from, runoff from the land and underwater volcanoes. Now, depending on where you are in the ocean, um, salinity can vary. So we have an average of 35 parts per thousand, um, but it's 33 at its low point to 38 at its high point. And this is due to several different things. Anything that adds fresh water to the ocean is going to decrease salinity. So that can be runoff from rivers into the ocean, or that could be the melting of icebergs and sea ice. Anything that removes fresh water from the ocean leaves the salt behind and increases salinity. So that's the freezing of water or evaporation of water. So to list those out, processes that decrease salinity can be precipitation, runoff, and ice melting. And processes that increase the salinity of water would be evaporation and freezing of sea ice. Ocean temperatures also vary, um, and this depends on the amount of sunlight that's reached at the surface, and that depends on latitude. You can see from this map during the equator, or around the equator, we have the highest amount of sunlight, so therefore we have the highest surface temperatures. As you move into your higher latitudes towards the North and South Pole, the sunlight is at a lower angle and temperatures at the surface are much cooler. So sunlight can penetrate the water to about a depth of 300 meters. Once we get down to 300 meters, you see that sudden, very quick drop off of temperature. That's called the thermocline, therm meaning heat. Um, and then once you get past that, then you have a steady cold temperature. Notice it always stays above freezing. Only at the surface do we find ice in the ocean. Ocean density is affected by three different factors, uh, temperature, salinity and, salinity, and depth. So the lower temperatures are going to have a higher density. Um, the more salt in the water, the more dense it is, and the deeper it is, the more dense it is. Depth um, causes higher density because all of the particles are under the weight of the water above, which compacts them together. 
So if we look at a map of ocean density, the areas in dark blue towards the north and south pole are going to be areas of your highest density because they have the coldest temperatures and higher salinities because of the amount of sea ice. Whereas at the equator, uh, we have lower densities because of the temperature where we see most of the sunlight.